When we last saw Alkai Reynolds, he and his partners decided to put in an offer on a three-bedroom, two-bathroom fixer-upper in IAEA that was listed for $559,000. With the help of Locations Realtor Tuan Doran, they got the house for $500,000 cash. Alkai estimated it would cost hundred grand to renovate the property. Then they planned to rent it out or sell it. I was born in Saigon, Vietnam, and, uh, and I grew up in Annapolis, Maryland, and then San Diego, California. Came to Hawaii in 1998. I've always felt like I belong here. When I first came to Hawaii, I was bartending, and one of the partners at the firm locations came in there once in a while, and he said, you know, I had a natural knack for real estate, so I said, you know, I have a business degree, college degree, I might as well apply it. I got my real estate license in 2002 and um, have been with the same company ever since and I've loved it. The thing that I love about, I guess, real estate is I'm not an office person, so being out in the field, um, showing homes or listing homes, um, I, I find that dynamic very exciting and I love working with people and I love helping people. You know, nothing is more rewarding um, than to hand a set of keys over to especially first-time home buyers. You know, I mean, just to see the looks on their faces and I keep in touch with every client that I've ever helped. If I look familiar to you, and I hope I do, uh, if it's not on a real estate basis, it's probably because I've been in a couple of indie films. Uh, one is actually playing on the mainland, it's called Ride the Thunder. And I was also in a film here that was shot in Hawaii called Popolo. And that's also making the circuit around the world actually in the film festival circuits. And there I actually play a Yakuza. It was really fun to play a bad guy. You know, I got into acting because I wanted to improve my speaking abilities. I, I wanted to be more comfortable in front of people. And so I decided, why not take acting lessons? You know, it's, it puts you in an uncomfortable position and you learn from it. But as I took lessons, I got to love it more and more. And ever since then, you know, I've been hooked. I've been hooked on acting. It's, it's so much fun. So this whole uh, development, Harbor Terrace, was developed in 1979. Uh, they're all three bedroom, two bath. Uh, they're considered single family homes, even though they're actually duplexes. Um, and what that means is they share a common wall with the neighbor. The biggest difference between them is that their land, some vary from 3,700 square feet up to about 6,300 square feet. But interior-wise, they're all almost identical in square footage, right at 1,200. Within the last year or so, there's been one sale, and that was a very similar home, not upgraded, in above average condition, and it sold at 600,000. 600? And, yep, 600,000. And, uh, and like I said, it, it wasn't uh, renovated at all. There's another house that just came on the market six days ago. Uh, just down okay. the street. Now I'm a little worried. At 649. Oh. They got nine offers. Oh, wow. That's so, awesome. So chances are with nine offers, it's going to sell way above the 649. Their land square footage is bigger. Okay. Um, it's l right around 6,200, 6,300 square feet. Okay. But they haven't really done any kind of major renovations. If you fix yours up, everything completely new. Yeah. You know, I'm confident that that's going to set the mark for us. That's great that, news, especially Bob. Especially since there's not that many units that come up here for sale. It's a good area for military, actually, because it's very close to Pearl Harbor, yes. um, Pearl City area. So it's actually very convenient. There's a close freeway on-ramp access and everything like that. So location-wise, it's really good. Okay, so Tuan, what I'm thinking is that this might be a potential flip, but with the high cost of how much money we have to put in, you know, roughly $100,000. I'm wondering how the rental market is for this area. I check with our property management division. They say that in this area for three bedroom, two bath, it's roughly around 2,500. All right. Um, around here, we get a lot of military renters who um, have housing allowance, so they're always on time with the rent. So yeah. it's possible or plan B could be rental. If, yeah. if it doesn't turn out and we spend too much money on the, the sure. renovation for Flip. Hi, my name is Marnie Reynolds and I started working with my brother probably when we were little. We used to build little cardboard boxes in the back of our house 
and pretend they were homes. And ever since then, we've slowly remodeled um, houses and apartments that we've owned. Usually he brings me in to do the designing aspect of it because um, I have a good eye for design and color and layout, figuring out what makes a space feel good when you walk into it, um, how you want to live in that space. My background, actually, I have an MBA in international business and I worked um, at a private school, Hanaholi School, for eight years in development and um, fundraising, marketing, PR. When I decided to change that and go into things that felt better for me, I decided to go become a yoga teacher and start my own um, yoga meditation business called Omen Rome. And on the side, I was helping my brother do all these projects here and there whenever I had spare time. This is called Lulu. We usually name the projects like the street that they're on. So this is the Lulu project. and. Uh, I didn't have any clue about this project. <laughs> um, I was actually in Burma in Southeast Asia teaching yoga for three weeks to some Buddhist nuns and orphans and I came back super blissed out and zened out to learn that we are flipping an entire 3-2. My understanding was that we were going to either rent or flip it and I think determining on how the project was going and how well it was going in terms of labor and cost and staying on budget. Um, we could put more investment into nicer materials like the flooring or the cabinetry and the fixtures and things like that. So I'm hoping that we're going to flip it because I think it would be a beautiful flip. The only way to, to learn about it is to just jump in, dive in head first. I didn't have any background in terms of a design certificate or going to school for design or learning how to pour concrete or learning how to mud and tape or drywall or plumbing or electrical is terrifying to me. But slowly over time and through the projects, I would have my brother to help me because he's really good at that kind of stuff. And I would just have the courage to just try something and he's such a good like rah 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 cheerleader that he's like, no, you can actually do it. Like you could actually mud and tape this whole room by yourself. So it's it's a it's very rewarding, I would say, because you see the tangible results. You see everything happening right before your eyes, and so that is really gratifying. But I'm not, it's, it's hard work for sure. It's definitely hard work. So the reality of a remodel construction project is you have this beautiful chart and a spreadsheet with deadlines and um, budget and you know what you think is gonna happen and today we had scheduled out to do the exterior um, wall of the whole home and so we bought all the supplies got everything ready and I was supposed to go pick up the crew and I confirmed with them the night before I got the big truck filled up with gas and I call them up and Nobody shows up at the pickup location. Nobody answers their phone. It goes to some girl called Yoko, and one of them I heard is in jail. So the backup plan is my brother's gonna go pick up painting overalls, and he, you know, is gonna take a half day off of work, and we're gonna have to do the exterior ourselves. I've never used a paint sprayer before, so that'll be a new experience, and I hope I don't mess up. The fencing, the same kind of thing happened. I got a call from the guy with his crew that um, are supposed to finish up the, the fencing. It's supposed to be done today. And one of his guys didn't show up and didn't call, which he's really baffled about because he's been a really good worker. His car broke down, so I went to take the truck to go try to jumpstart his car, which didn't start. And now he has rolled it down to Napa to go try to restart it. And we might have to pick him up later today. So. I don't know what's happening with the fencing. That's actually, I should just have a t-shirt that says like, I don't know what's happening today and just go with the flow because you just, you never know what's gonna happen. It's like disaster is just waiting for you around the corner. So will their real estate gamble pay off? Stay tuned.